In today's video, the Flexbone offense is coming at us again. Hey, what's going on YouTube? Mr. Football here today. And today I want to talk about um, Flexbone offense again. This is going to be part two, episode two of our Flexbone breakdown. Uh, it's been several months since I've uh, last did a video in this series. It was way back in the summer. Um, and I wanted to just kind of break down three base plays that we see. Um, this is just kind of what we see in general with the Flexbone teams that we play. And uh, just kind of breaking down some of the base stuff. Um, a lot of this is pretty complimentary of what they do. Um, but I just wanted to talk about um, pretty much inside veer, just a straight dive, um, and then belly or belly G, and just kind of talk about those plays. Um, we'll start with, uh, I want to start with just the basic dive play. Just kind of showing up, I have an over front defense drawn up here, uh, one high safety, just kind of playing, uh, just something simple here. And I just kind of want to talk about what they're trying to do here. All right. There's what we see. Now, you may see this a little differently. Um, the big thing about Flexbone is pretty much for what we see, and this is uh, pretty accustomed to a lot of Flexbones that you play, there will be motion on pretty much every play. So the motion does sometimes tip you off on um, kind of where they're going, but it's not one of those things you can always depend on because they will motion the guy, say, to the right here, and then they'll run belly G to the weak side. So, I mean, there's all kinds of different things that we've seen with variations. So um, what we see with the base dive is they will, what tells me that it's dive and they're just giving it to their fullback, which pretty much is their like best downhill runner. Um, I've seen where, you know, they will just straight give it to this guy and this guy can break it for 30 or 40 yards untouched because most time people get, so worried about the motion guy because at the start of the play, you know, you just you just see this without uh, without everything drawn up here. Um, you know, it's just just here. And then quarterback gets down. This guy comes in motion, and by the time that he's about where the back is in the backfield, our fullback, the ball has been snapped. All right, and at that point on this dive play, he's just running his pitch path. And so his pitch path, the, the, you know, the quarterback will go ahead and give it here. It'll be the straight dive. They're going to hit the bubble of wherever we're at. So like if they want to attack us on our strong side, they're probably running an A or B gap. Uh, just like that. That's just a bubble. Like they think they can get, you know, three to five yards on that. That's a good play for them. And, and it happens like that too. Like it's, that's a hard thing to stop. And so you can do different things to try to prevent that. Um, you can try to spill some things that I've liked to do uh, with this in the past is, is try to, to spill it. So you can, you know, you attack inside. So you try to make the ball spill out to the outside. That doesn't, you know, it's just one of those things that you want to have kind of some different ways to play against it. Um, different fronts, different adjustments, but like, that's just kind of, that's just kind of it. Like dive is simple. Um, depending on what you do, like if you were to bring the Mike, Mike linebacker here, you're probably going to have the the center kick off on that guy. Cause normally they get pretty much a, a double team here. But when you compare dive to inside veer, when they run veer and they're going to read our defensive end, um, I've seen them do different things with our defensive ends um, as far as like on dive. I'm, I'm kind of going back, back between dive and veer because they look so similar. But then when you include the option element in Flexbone, uh, I mean, it's deadly. Like, I mean, it's, if you don't account for it, I mean, you will get torched. Um, so most of the time on dive, what I, what I see is they'll block our defensive end and you know it's a straight give and then everything else is just kind of like you know it's just the motion is window dressing um you know these wing back guys they're not the best blockers um some will bring a tight end in and he's a better blocker type so you do get some tight end looks at times and we'll draw those up eventually as well 
uh, cause we see different things with that, but that's kind of dive. I mean, it's just a straight dive. They're going to hit the bubble. Obviously, <clears throat> you know, there's different, we have a bubble over here that they could attack as well. If they wanted to attack our weak side, they could do that. Um, but we try to have some different adjustments for the weak side on that play. That's dive. The next base play that we see in flex bones, flex bone offenses is we see what would you, what you essentially would just call inside veer. Um, inside veer, they are going to, they are not going to block our defensive end, the strong side, mark him in red there. Okay. They're not gonna, they're not gonna block this cat. All right. So what they're looking to do is, is they're, they're either going to give based on what he does. They're either going to give the ball to the fullback. If this guy was to sit and hold for the quarterback, like if he was to, Come off of his if his if we teach our defensive end to stand up and you know read the quarterback like you're the quarterback player in the option. So like if we teach him to just stand there and wait for the quarterback, they'll probably give it. Okay. Now there's different things that they'll do off of that. Okay. So the first option, it's it's essentially triple option. If you want to think of it as triple option, think of it as triple option. So the three options is is the give the keep by the quarterback where the quarterback will essentially keep off of the defensive end. So let's say the keep aspect is let's say our defensive end, we tell him to absolutely just train wreck and go get the back, you know, bend down the line, go get him. What will happen is the quarterback will keep the ball off of him. And so he sees this guy squeeze down really hard and he will he will pull the ball from the from the fullback's belly and then he he's on his he's on his option path. <clears throat> now at the snap of the play, we've got our wing back here in motion. And so by the time the ball is snapped, he's back here in pitch relationship with the quarterback. Off of that, <clears throat> now the other option element that you see with this is you know, we've seen the wing back to the play side go up. We've seen him uh, go block, try to block the free safety, um, <clears throat> try to scrape off to a linebacker. I've seen it different ways, uh, but they can also pitch off of our uh, strong safety that's out here. They pitch off of him, say, let's say that this guy is taken out of the play. And, you know, at some point here, the quarterback, he's, he can still option the option the ball off here to his wing back, say our um, <clears throat> our strong safety, like he goes, takes the quarterback, then that leaves this guy open to uh, to run. So that's the that's the triple. That's the so it's it's give, keep and pitch. And the pitch is the last element of that. Um, <clears throat> we've done a pretty good job with with option um, just kind of in the past. We've we've done an OK job. Um, the biggest thing that I feel that that hurts us at times is the the op is kind of just it's our it's our option rules. Like if we change things too much, sometimes it gets us in trouble. So we like to have different reads, but I'm I'm kind of in the process this year of trying to figure out what we can do better for the option because the way that we do it is each player is assigned an element of the option. We try to have at least one and a half players to two for each player on the offense. And so, like, when we take the dive, like, if this is if this dive hits a gap, strong side, we should have, in theory, the mic and the and the and the tackle our three technique tackle the dive all day. Like, but if that doesn't happen, then we've got the quarterback. Well, our defensive end and our free safety can play. Our free safety, we kind of tell him play quarterback to pitch. So, like, <clears throat> our defensive end will be responsible for the quarterback. Like, he's going to hit the quarterback no matter what. Like, we're going we're gonna to put the quarterback on the ground, um, make him make the wrong decision. Uh, if we, we want him to pitch the ball. I mean, if when you pitch the ball, you have the opportunity to put the ball on the ground. So, if we do a good job of that, put the ball, if we are able to get to the pitch man, we then have one to two guys on the pitch with our strong safety, because we'll say strong safety, you have the pitch, man. He is your guy. The final play that we'll talk about today is belly G. So belly G for the most part, for what we see, we see is a weak side uh, gap scheme run play. Um, it's not, it's not option. 
uh, base. A lot of flex bone teams will use this as essentially, uh, it's kind of like the, the old school, it's a thing like wing T belly play. It's like a weak side uh, kind of give to the fullback type, uh, almost like an ISO type of thing. Uh, but when we saw belly G, I started trying to uh, study the flex bone just a little bit more a um, couple off seasons ago. And it was actually the year that we played two flex bones in the same year. And, and the first time we played the, the flex bone, we were like, okay, well, that was, that was, that was crazy. I'm glad we were able to pull that one out. And then the second time we played it, um, I started studying it just a little bit more kind of in season and just kind of getting a, just some quick, just, just looking at belly and trying to figure out how to stop belly. I come across for what a lot of teams were doing, which was belly G. So what we see with belly G, belly G is a inside run, uh, complementary to the option. So you'll see, uh, some of the option elements in this, but belly G belly. When I think of like the wing T, they would run like say the fullback or it'd kind of be like an ISO insert type of play. Um, you know, hitting to the weak side. It's kind of the same thing with belly G. So belly G, you will see a down block. They will also call, they'll also kind of call this play down. So you'll get the down block by the tackle. You'll get a kick out block from the guard. So hence the G aspect of belly G. So it's the kick out there. You'll have the wing back kind of arc and go get, uh, you know, kind of the force defender or, you know, a uh, outside linebacker type safety. And then they're just going to run the, the fullback and they're just, they're going to run him right off of that kick out block uh, from your, from your guard. It's a very fast hitting play. Um, they do include some motion in this as well. So you'll have the wing back motion by the time he gets there. Uh, he's in pitch relationship, but it's really just to draw your eyes to that. And then they gash you with the inside run. So uh, we, we've done some different things where uh, we've tried to spill this play, um, where we either try to spill gap exchange, where we'll have our defensive end come come into the B gap. Instead of being a C gap player, we'll exchange him with the, the will linebacker. We've done that before, kind of gives you a different look. Um, so there's some different things you can do with it. But that's essentially what they're trying to do with Belly G. Um, so just kind of give you guys that look. But uh, that's been our three base plays, uh, looking at just basic dive, uh, veer, uh, just inside veer, their you know, base option play that you'll see with a lot of flex bones. There's more elements to the option that you can get into, but it's essentially kind of where you start with the flex bone. And then just talking about just a base run with uh, – which they probably would call it a base run, but it's a complimentary run that we see a lot in belly G and belly G uh, works. And it's uh, if you're not, if you can't stop it, then you're probably in trouble. So, um, so anyway, that's just, um, that's everything today. Just wanted to talk about uh, just the three base runs. We'll get into pass next episode. Just talk about some pass that we see um, off of the uh, flex bone option offense. So uh, we'll see you guys next time. I'm Mr. Football and I'm out of here. Perfect.